Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Today's moderator, Dr. Susan Strauss. Hey, welcome to It's a Woman's World, and we have got a very interesting topic for you today, one that you will truly enjoy. I'm Dr. Susan Strauss. I will be your host for the day, along with these four charming co-hosts, and let me introduce them to you. First, we have Janita Flowers. Hey, Janita. Hi, Susan. How are you? I'm doing well. If I can get everybody's names good today, we'll be right on mark. <laughs> <laughs> Been struggling with names. And we have Ali Nathani. Yeah. Hey, Susan. Hey, good to have you here. Hey. And we also have Dara Beavis. Dara. Hi. Glad you're here as well. Yeah, good to see you. Dara is one of our newest co hosts to join the show. Mm -hmm. And we have Nadia Jordana. Hey, Nadia. Happy to be here. Glad you are here as well. We're going to be talking about well, a topic that we are all struggling with all the time, right? Mm -hmm. One of multitasking. I'm currently putting together a training on chaos in the workplace. Wow. And one of the things that I've been looking at is multitasking. And what do we do as women mm -hmm. to multitask? They say that as women, we're supposed to be very good at that because both sides of our brain uh, communicate very well, supposedly better than men's, which makes us better multitaskers, <laughs> but not according to the literature. What do you think about multitasking, Janita? I've heard that multitasking is not a good concept because then you're not giving your full attention to either project that you're working on. Um, but regardless of what the research says, I am not a good multitasker. Um, mm. So I have to try to focus. I will get off focus sometimes and do multiple things. And that's when I have half projects done. Yes. Um, so I really try to focus as much as I can. Or depending on what the project is, I'll just you know do what I can when I can for what, what I have. <laughs> So. I, I'm with you on that, and I have read recent mo more modern articles than the old adage about multitasking is, is the greatest talent anyone could ever have. Now, in the workplace especially, I think mm -hmm. home life might be different. In the workplace especially, multitasking is becoming viewed a little less of the optimal, because you have to start and stop and over with projects. I think at home you have to be a multitasker. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not very good at multitasking, like you. I have to do one or two things at a time. Throw three or four at me, and it gets really tough, and I fall behind. So I'm, I'm a definitely more of a get very focused, do a real good job, and not so much on the multitasking. What, what about in your aging? Have you found that multitasking it's has harder. become harder? Yes, yeah. it's I much harder. Really thought of that. Very it, much. It's much harder for me, yeah. too. And I used to just thrive on having all these little projects to do because mm -hmm. I'd get bored. Mm -hmm. And now I get stressed if I've got I too much I to do. I think I was kidding myself when I was younger, but it, it, it I was always a, a challenge. But everybody said you had to be that way. So I did it, but now it's much harder to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I can multitask, and I'm actually, mm -hmm. where I found out I was pretty good at it was when I worked at the college coffee bar. I could man, you uh, know, just oh, yeah. be there and handle the lunch rush by myself because mm. I'd be ringing someone up, and I'd be like taking the next order, and then I'd be having a coffee brewed. Really? So I, re I found out I could do it. However, as I got older, as I a I'm aging, I'm finding I don't like it. I don't yeah. value it as yes. much. And and what, who taught me the best about this, I think, are my kids. And where they're like, you're not really paying attention to me, Mom, oh, right now. When they'll come and ask me something, and then I'm multitasking in my mind. I'm like, yeah, I got spaghetti on the stove, and then I got to do this mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock. They picked up on it so mm -hmm. fast. And I think in the workplace, with technology, and yes. we don't talk to each other as yeah. much, yes. I think it's just... It's become something that I've learned to not, to, I guess, just not to appreciate as much as I thought. Yeah. And, and I, I, I was someone who I thought was pretty good at it. So, as, and as you're a really still owner, young. As a business owner, I don't know how you could not multitask because I have employees who interrupt me when I'm trying to focus on something. I have a, a client who calls. Then the nature of being a book publisher, every book is at a different stage. Oh, yeah. But I would say I. So I do it, and I like being able to optimize my time. You keep that time. all in your head too, don't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel I feel empowered that I get to, you know, maximize maximize my list of things to do in any given hour. 
but it is so much more peaceful to be able to focus on one thing at a time. And when you're editing a book, you shouldn't be doing something oh, else. I would think that's not. probably what happens when you read a book and you find that missing word or missing yes, letter. Yes, the editor was multitasking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see, I think of it as being flexible. Yeah. When I have, because as a business owner, there are multiple things coming at me at different times, or I have to be okay with stopping something and starting yeah. something else. Yeah. And um, coming back and to it. I look at it as I have to be flexible, but I'm as a practice over, and I can do it, and I can be good at it and get it done, but as an overall lifestyle practice, multitasking is not a strong trait of mine. Yeah. Well, you, and you all, except for Nadia and I, well, you not quite yet, yours is still in the warmer, but <laughs> you, you still have kids, mm -hmm. and so you're multitasking once you get home. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I remember those days, mm -hmm. and with cooking and, you know, mom, will you help me with my math? Oh, honey, I don't know how anymore to do that kind of math. But, you know, you've got all of that with the kids. You are going to. Yeah. So how do you, do you find then, is your multitasking different when you're at home compared to when you are working? And then how do you, how do you combine those two, mm -hmm. the multitasking with work and home, the nexus, the, the, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the balance of it. Sure. So I've often gone grocery shopping over my lunch hour, and I'll yeah. figure out, oh, I'll just keep yeah. it in the fridge, whatever needs to be refrigerated, yep. and I've got that done. So by the time I get home, then you're sort of, if you're on the bus or you're driving, you're mapping out in your head, well, if I start this, then I can help with this, then I have to drive yes. over here. Yep. And that, and and to your point that you just, you that constant interruption, and then it becomes yeah. chaos. And so mm -hmm. I think part of it is just being in the stage you are as a mother. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, and, and then you just, you just, it's a survival thing you have to get through it because you have to get some tasks done right and people have to be I mean children have to be fed they have yeah. to be relatively clean by the time they go to bed at night or something right and I mean, you know, so so you just make it work somehow I, I think I mean no, I think you create a routine the things that are um, need to be constant such as bedtime and um, you know that they eat prioritize. those things. Yes. Yeah. 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 Prioritize. So you prioritize them, but others, you know, when we're going on a earlier sports night, you know, they may be eating in the car. Mm -hmm. Homework is oh, done in the wow. car, or yep. if one child is practicing, the other one's doing their homework. We find a table. It's, so it's really just sort of taking your routine and figuring out how do I do it on the go or do it at home. Mm -hmm. And I guess because that's the season of life I'm in, and mm -hmm. that's every day. I don't look at it as multitasking. Right. I look at it as just this is where I am, yeah. and this is the way of life. And because it is. Mm -hmm. It becomes almost mundane because you do it every day. Mm -hmm. That it you get just used to it. yeah. It's, so it's mm -hmm. it's not like I have to make some tough decision mm -hmm. and I'm doing 12 things. It's okay. Dinner is this. We're doing that. Grab that. Get in the car. Get your shoes. Do you have your backpack? Get yep. your book. Read in the car. <laughs> let the window down. No music. Like so, you just oh, do it. God. But it's well, not that well done. That was you just that scene at her house. Yeah, you that didn't even have to think that. twice. But I mean, that's every you know that's it's every, every day. day, and so you just do it yeah. as opposed to when I'm you know writing a report or I have something yeah. that's due or I need to fix this recipe like that's different like yeah. well there's a couple of things that you've brought up here I think you've brought food up a couple of times a recipe so in this whole multitasking mm -hmm. part of your life how do you now you've got a husband who's a who's I a cook do. so really you lucky. don't even count <laughs> <laughs> lucky you. Um, but how, how do you how, how do you multitask but bring in the whole essence of having to cook for your family mm -hmm. and have decent I mean, I, I, you all cook here. I've seen you cook, and you add this and you add that. You just don't throw a frozen pizza in the oven. So what do you, what do you do then to incorporate a healthy meal in with all of this multitasking, especially if you're using recipes and having people over? How does that even work for you? You're, you know, if, if you're busy, you find simpler cleaner more straightforward recipes now I do I do two things I do a lot of of that when I'm busy mm -hmm. I also when I have a day when I am going to be focused and not multitasking <laughs> and just for me I'll take the whole day and cook something that literally oh. takes all day long and I do that you, this is going to scare you I do that for fun <laughs> <laughs> But we're talking about multitasking. So when, when I'm online and I find clean, simple recipes or I see them demonstrated by someone else, I quick jot that down. Mm -hmm. And uh, th then I keep those for those days when I'm busy. And 
when I want to do something and don't have to think as much about cooking. Do you freeze some of this stuff then or what? Some women do and there are whole websites about that. I don't do that. Oh, there are? I don't oh my God. I, don't I wish either. I did no. more of that. Oh, I think for me, I had to let go of perfection. Mm -hmm. And because children are, they can be picky and we know we're not, you know, creating our meals so that our kids will just eat everything. But there are battles that you don't want to fight every single day. Mm -hmm. So when I'm trying to incorporate nutrition, I try to do it at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So they're only going to eat what I buy. Right. And so I may, I don't meal plan every day because some days I don't have the time, I don't have the energy, nor do I really care. Just <laughs> eat what's in the refrigerator. So if I'm still determining what's in my house and what's in my refrigerator, they're going to get some of the nutrition nutrition that I need, think they need to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just may not be at every meal. So if we're having pizza three nights this week, it's because I don't want to fight this week, and mm -hmm. so that's what I'm giving into. Mm -hmm. And then next week, if I'm going to bake fish and I'm going to make you eat it, I don't care if you hate it, this is what I'm making and you're going to eat it, then that's what we'll do because for some reason I feel like fighting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But that's kind of how I can yeah. kind of bring in the nutrition. Yeah. I do the grocery shopping, and so they're going to get it because I'm bringing the yeah. fruit in or the mm -hmm. snacks. Yeah, I think it's about what you said the letting go especially with food yeah. and the family just you know just again seriously some days it is you know are they do they look healthy they seem like they're walking around okay <laughs> yeah. you know and, and then it's all about that good intention right yeah. and just just having to do the best you can mm -hmm. I mean, flexibility I think, yeah, yeah so much of it gets put on us and we hear so much about oh don't eat this and this is so bad for you and it's like well we just want to live in this world too right mm -hmm. so. so do you now you're past that stage your mm -hmm. stage hasn't come yet but for the two of you for the multitasking and thinking about food are you teaching your children then also how to cook which might alleviate some of your need mm -hmm. to incorporate cooking into all of your tasks mm -hmm. my daughter cooks two nights a week oh, oh good wow. okay Very but good. that's as a single that's mom awesome. and I you know in order for me not to be high stress high anxiety all the time I had to be okay with distributing the tasks yeah. so Delegate. my daughter Delegate. cooks now my son is 10 he doesn't he puts stuff in the microwave but he doesn't get on the stove or anything okay. I bought a toaster oven so he can put simple things in the toaster oven yeah. so mm -hmm. he can take a little bit charge of some of his meals but my daughter cooks two nights a week. And if the early meals aren't perfect, it's okay. Yep. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. We did that when my kids were teenagers, too. We, um, Let's see. I think we each of them had to cook two nights a week, so that took off four nights. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and then I Fantastic. cooked one night a week, my husband cooked one night a week, and then one night a week we had a free-for-all. Nice. And that worked. What What yeah. about your kids? Are Same they cooking? Same with us. Mine are, mine are just being teenagers and being so busy, they yes. don't, literally don't. But what I will have them do is like throw the marinade together. And that's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Especially mm -hmm. in Indian cooking, you use all these spices mm -hmm. and colors. And so, you know, so I'll have them do stuff like that or, you know, help me with a cake or, you know, they mm -hmm. they do have to unload the dishwasher. Yes. They do have certain things that, you know, that so that helps, I would say. And you're right. I. Kids are so much busier now than when my kids yeah, were were younger, mm -hmm. and so I mean they maybe had something going on after school, but they were still home at a decent amount of time. Uh, yeah. So, did you teach your kids how to cook, Nadia? Uh, yeah. My I have at one my daughter, and she's a fantastic cook, and mm. she did get good examples at home. And then later on, uh, a after uh, uh, she went to chef school for oh, a while. Oh, she did. Oh, so she. Good for her. And even though she didn't become a chef in a restaurant, we talked about that. She said the skills she learned were still fantastic. Oh, sure. Good so, yeah. for her. Yeah. Well, good. considering all this multitasking and mm -hmm. considering that food is one of those tasks, stay tuned for our next segment because we're going to do a little cooking. Hi, welcome back to our next segment of It's a Woman's World, and we this time are going to eat because Nadia is going to prepare something for us. But please note, we have a new member of our group, and this is Tommy Beavis, and Tommy also just happens to be a chef for the Pimento Restaurant, so we are in good hands and good taste buds today. So go for it, Nadia. Tell us what you're going to do. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to read the list of ingredients in just a moment. I'm making a cold cucumber soup, mm. which the it sounds kind of strange just saying <laughs> chilled or cold cucumber soup, but the French call it vichyssoise. Now, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Okay, now vichyssoise. Take a 
English cucumber, that's one of the ingredients. If you use a normal cucumber, you're gonna have to de-seed it. But with this one, you really don't. And you kind of want the moisture that's in that cucumber. So is the difference between an English cucumber and a regular cucumber seeds. the seeds? The seeds. Oh, this is, the seeds are almost non-existent in here. Now, uh, half a cup of uh, sour cream I have here, but you could also use Greek yogurt. Mm. Uh, I've heard of some other ingredients like using the Greek yogurt or even using pureed avocado oh, wow. instead oh, to go vegan wow. rather than having any yeah, kind of dairy, dairy. in here. Mm -hmm. Coconut milk and avocado rather than a little bit of milk and sour cream. Ooh. So that's a, a, a an option. Now where's, uh, uh, you could throw in a little bit of dill uh, but you can use other herbs. I've got some green onions here. Uh, a little bit of salt can be pinched in here. I think I just put some along the side there. And many use horseradish sauce. I'm mm. using wasabi today. Wow. Oh, wait, now what's that? I don't know. It's you know. another form of horseradish. Oh. Call it Japanese horseradish. Okay, so mm -hmm. is it... Is it more it's, stringent? It, this one happens to be really mild, okay. but some of them can be really hot mm -hmm. and spicy. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of Worcestershire or some other, but I, I don't know what I would use in place of that unless you went to a whole different flavor. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the list of the ingredients. Now you can just rough chop this English cucumber. All right, I have a question for you sure. on that again. Now, if it, this is the one without seeds, how do you recognize this? from the outside compared to a regular cucumber. This one in looks the store, longer. This is longer, thinner, and it comes wrapped in plastic, and it will be called an English cucumber, oh, too. I don't so know if there's good. another name for it okay. or not, but I'm going to so just... So while you're chopping, Nadia, can mm -hmm. you talk a little about the concept of cold soup or bichichois? Uh, summertime soup, okay. uh, appetizer, mm -hmm. pre-dinner, but oftentimes, if you watch cooking shows, you might see somebody do that in, I remember in the southern movies where they would serve that and everybody's sitting outdoors mm -hmm. and they're having a little cold cucumber soup outdoors oh in the God. summertime. French restaurants. It's very so good. Yes. 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 You're chopping those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. smell the cucumber. Right the <laughs> smells so fresh. Yeah. Would you say that French word one more time, please? Vichy swap. Vichy swap. How did you get that right off the bat? <laughs> I'm a good listener. I don't you know. must be. <laughs> That's quite impressive. Oh, yeah, and then everything else is, is really fast and easy. I'll just plop these ingredients so that's in the sour here. cream? That's the sour cream. I'm going to put just a little splash of the milk. That looks so like based whole on, milk, is based it? On your yeah. Based on your experience. Of Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. How, what's the kid factor on this? Oh, oh good yeah. question. The kid factor? Yeah, like if kids will eat it. No. Oh. <laughs> this is definitely for the advanced palate. Yeah, I I would think that kids would not eat this. Now you got some green going in. Yeah, oh, and right. uh, dill is a really okay. other good. Ingredient. It may take just a minute to get this to Shake it a bit. go down, yeah. and that's why I Do brought a splash. Milk? Yes. There you go. Because that's the trick. Now you can either go, <laughs> either go smooth or leave it somewhat chunky. That's a preference thing. What's your preference, Nadia? My preference is the smoother the better. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I kept it simple here. Now I'm going to start with you, Tommy. Oh, I love serving them in the out in the garden with these little glass oh. flower pots. Yeah. Beautiful. Ooh, nice look at shot glass. Nice. Yeah. Look at that nice. color. For you, I think Beautiful. we have a. Nice. You want some scallion on top? We need another spoon there, and I'll give you guys some. Here you go. You can yeah. use a spoon. Well, there's another and one over there. I'll, here, I'll start with these. Mm. <laughs> Should have a nice, fresh, clean that, flavor. It does have, you can smell the freshness of everything, yeah, and yeah. this would be perfect. Thank you. Uh, not, uh, yeah, not everybody likes dill, mm -hmm. but I really, mm -hmm. I really love this made with dill. Now, best to this use a spoon, I assume, rather than you sip through the cup? You can either drink it or Ooh, use the spoon. Ooh, smells wonderful. The creaminess of it, it I love does. the texture. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, wow. 
And I would, I think for me, mm. I would puree it even more because I like mm. it just totally smooth, smooth and creamy. I don't take the skin off the cucumber. I mm -hmm. like the little flecks oh, in there. Right. It's healthier. Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, but you know the the kind of cucumbers that have the waxy, uh -huh. the, the fatter yeah. ones. Those I would peel. Mm -hmm. You would. Yeah. I'm not a huge cucumber fan, but what I love about this is the freshness of it. Yeah. But then when you add the milk in it, and then you taste a bit yeah. of the wasabi, you, you're getting the, the complexity of the, mm -hmm. of the dish itself. Mm -hmm. But usually with cucumber, I'm like, ugh, too salad <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, salad. Yeah. Yes, but this yeah. is really good and very refreshing. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Very you have such a nice way of being able to differentiate the different flavors in it that add mm -hmm. to the overall flavor. Mm -hmm. It's like being a wine taster, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Um, but what, what, one of the things I love is the complexity of flavors. Mm -hmm. So so if, even when um, you're doing spices, so at Pimento, we have a sauce called Kill Them With It. It's the hottest sauce we have, but it's not the type that burns their face off. You know, it's the different layers of mm -hmm. flavors, mm -hmm. and this definitely has a multiple layers. Wonderful. And that's what I'm enjoying yeah, about it does. It. Yeah, you can taste yeah. it. I, th I would have been interested to have more onion and more of the horseradish. Yeah, and you can. Oh. If, if you're yeah. tasting it in your home kitchen, you can do that until you have it just perfect. Just perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very well, good. This was really great. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Delicious. And everybody, stay tuned because we've got somebody else coming up. <laughs> right. Ali, she is going to create for us a quesadilla. A quesadilla. So I see you shortly. <laughs> All right. Perfect. We're good. Good job. Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to taste some food and see how it's made from the south of the border. Ali is going to prepare a quesadilla. Yes. Go for it, oh, Ali. I'm excited. <laughs> all right. I'm excited. Yeah, well, thank you all. So what I have here, a quesadilla is just fundamentally, right? A, a tortilla, and then you can stuff it with anything you like, like refried beans or mm -hmm. um, seafood or what else? Chicken, mm -hmm. steak, Jesus. right? Cheeses, anything. So Never. I have a really hot pan going on here. So I'm going to take my tortilla, let's just start getting that cooking. Mm. And so what we've got in front of us is a ton of color, and we always say we eat with our eyes, mm, right? Absolutely. So what this is, is this is some slaw that I just shredded up some fresh cabbage, added lots of cilantro, carrot, mm. and green onion to it. Really mm. simple to have in your fridge all week long. It goes mm. great. You can, it's very versatile. You can use it for a lot of things. We've just got some salsa right going on right here, and then we've got some queso here, which is like a cheese dip. And then um, over here, you'll see some avocado. We sprayed some lime on that, some sour cream. Right here, we've got some refried beans. I'm going to go back to my quesadilla. You can see, look at how nicely that looks. Wow, nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. You yep. smell yep. that, too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're still soft and pliable, so that's what we want. So we're going to take this quesadilla. What I've got here is just some refried beans. You know the kind yeah. you buy in the can, the simple mm -hmm. ones? Yep. And then what I did was, you want to turn, thank you for turning that down. Um, we're just going to spread some on half of it like that. Mm, and then yeah. we're taking some, oh, I forgot. I took these mm. onions. Oh, what this I'm is, so excited about is some onions. sliced up onions. Oh. And I put them on a cast iron. And so, Tommy, what do you think of a cast iron? I love cast iron because it, it maintains the heat. And no yep. matter what you're cooking, and it cooks evenly and very flavorful. Yeah, and it kind of gives that smoky taste. Oh, yeah, too, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's why I purposely did that. And then I'm going to take this queso, which is just store-bought. I'm going to put some over here. Just for some extra flavor. Queso's okay, like, what, a good mm -hmm. cheese dip that mm -hmm. people like. Mix with some pepper. Mix with some pepper. You got it. And then we've got some sa um, salsa here we're going to put on top of here. So it's just building these flavors. Mm -hmm. um, smells so good. It does. Oh, that's good. And then we're going to add some slaw on top of here. And so fancy. Just <laughs> a little bit. It's a good and then color. I want some avocado. Flip it over. Should we put some avocado in there too? That looks yummy. Oh, it's a great idea. Yeah. Why not? You put avocado on uh, everything. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I love avocado. It's so healthy for you, right? Absolutely. How am I doing, Tommy? Is that good? Love it. Love okay. it. Love it. That'll be Thank yours. you, Susan. <laughs> you bet. All right, we're just gonna fold this, and now you just kind of. Do you hear that sizzle? Yeah, mm -hmm. you right. squish it down and so let it So squish it down, let it, it'll somehow fall out, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And we've got, Tommy, we've got a finished one over here. Mm -hmm. And so Tommy, will you show us how we just cut that up? The beauty about this is something that will be fun to make with the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, they can, everybody can be helpful. Yeah. And it's, there's no wrong way of doing it. That's right. the beauty about it. And you can customize it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you don't like cheese, or you, you know, it's perfect too. If you have vegetarians over, vegans over, you know, you just do it the, the way that people like it. And if you have a teenage boy, he'd take that whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Place them on top. And so and we pre-plated. We've got some sweet uh, potato chips on there, or mm. tortilla chips. I'm sorry, I should say. Sweet potato. Sweet potato. Yeah. Yes. Love that flavor. So we just tapped it on there, Tommy. I'm gonna give you another one. Just slide slide that right yes. off. More the merrier. All right. And so. 
We can salt. Dig you it? can eat it with more salsa. Want? So dig in, mm -hmm. take grab a plate All and right. take a wedge. And I think on a scale of one to ten, the kid factor would be about a ten. Yeah. This would be yeah. big on yeah. kid yes. factor. For sure. Definitely easy to eat with a hand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Thanks. And then yeah. um, we can uh, top it more yeah. with sour cream. Oh, all the, yeah. You can take mm. more of that avocado if you like. Mm. I'm going mm. in. More with the slaw. Oh, this so, is yummy. Mm. Let me tell you mm. something. Mm. I have made quesadillas before, but I had never made a quesadilla like this before until <laughs> I came to the show. <laughs> we talked about multitasking earlier in the show. Yes. This yeah. week has just been crazy busy, so I thought, well, this idea has got to work. So <laughs> thank you for <laughs> <fantastic>. <laughs> Does. Thank you. It works really well. Yeah, this um, is fantastic. You can taste even the caramelized onions. Yeah. Oh, you get a bite. What a treat mm -hmm. those yep. onions are. You get a bit of the avocado, which gives yeah. that buttery flavor, mm -hmm. that yeah. sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. And the funny part, it doesn't have any meat, and we didn't even notice it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? right. Great vegetarian mm -hmm. option here. Yeah, they're easy to do, and um, oh, I'm gonna follow you and put some salsa. Yeah, on top. I, I like extra salsa, and mm -hmm. I I mm -hmm. like uh, a lot of flavor in mine, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I would add Yeah, more very very good, Ali. Yeah. And this could be a meal or it could be appetizer. Yeah, it yep. could be a nice appetizer wow. when you're asked to bring something mm -hmm. over. Yeah, perfect week weeknight option because mm. you can pretty much use whatever is in the refrigerator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, That's you don't exactly have to it. have too much thought about it or planning, yeah. but you still feel good about what you're feeding your family. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And what'd you think of the slaw in it? Oh, Did love it that. Go okay? I, I liked it. I liked the like crunch. It? So mm -hmm. this is actually organic cabbage slaw, organic carrot, organic slaw. But the mm -hmm. thing is with my kids, sometimes I'll chop in there some organic spinach too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh. They have no idea. They I know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like <laughs> Keep it up part. a notch. Right. Mm -hmm. right. What about it, kale? Could you put you kale put in there? Kale mm -hmm. would be absolutely fabulous as well. But what I do is I fine chop this. I have it all week in my house. And so all through the week I'll use it. So my son will eat it with ranch dressing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. Vegetarian sandwiches for my husband for lunch. Mm -hmm. um, so he takes that. So it's really versatile. And, you know, and it's just in the fast paced world. Again, the refried beans were simply from the can, but I tried to doctor them up a little yeah. bit with some seasoning, cumin, and some um, peppers. Red, red peppers. Bell peppers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those that were looks actually. Nice. Yeah, those were actually j uh, grilled bell peppers from oh, the jar. Wow. Oh, and so, wow. As you were talking about, you know, with that onion, you mm -hmm. know, just heightening mm -hmm. some flavors yeah. too mm -hmm. helps with cooking, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. it does. Onion yeah. is a good thing to add to everything. Yeah. This is very easy. This Within is five fantastic. minutes. You can yeah, make, right? yeah. make this from <laughs> yeah. stuff you already have in your pantry. I, I think Perfect. you maybe need to cut it. I know, I know. Yeah. I was kind of looking yeah. at the others. I'm like, oh. Here's another one. Yeah. And let's. Uh, um, Beverly and Mike. Yep, and he's cutting up some more. So do you we'll want another sure one? Share. Yes, right. I will help myself to this. Mm -hmm. Everybody at home, you're really missing out. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. Go for it. So yeah, so we encourage you to give it a try, easy. And uh, I think also the kids would love putting this together. Too. Wouldn't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. yeah, especially if you so. laid different things out that they could right. do it. Right. And the right. finger food, the ability to eat with mm -hmm. your hands, kids mm -hmm. would really love. Yeah. Yes, that's right. When they have a bunch of kids over, Slumber yeah. party or something. Yeah, it would be the perfect yeah. slumber party. Too. Yeah, it would. It would. Oh. Well, yeah. involving the kids in your cooking as much as possible always makes it a little bit easier for them to yeah, eat. Yeah, right. They take pride in what they've made. Mm -hmm. Have them make it. Right. And they're more forgiving when um, you, when they're the ones inserting the vegetables. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Because they do. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Well, I tell you, we just had another great little tidbit of food that was made by Ali, our quesadilla. It was great. So we hope that you might want to try it at home. So thank you for joining us for It's a Woman's World. We enjoyed having you. I hope you enjoyed us being with you today. See you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.